In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe. Grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard the word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is king. He is moved in majesty. The Lord is king. He is moved in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed, robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty, and he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne 
stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are our Lord. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King, He has robed in majesty. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Pilate said to Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. A number of years ago, as a seminarian, I was assigned to a summer at parishes in Brockton. And some of you may know there's a small park not far from the church of St. Edith Stein, just down the road, maybe about a mile down the road. But it's not exactly the kind of park that you want to take a Sunday stroll in. It is often referred to by those who live nearby or those who live in Brockton as Needle Park. The men and women who spend their time, their days, and even their nights there are not exactly the kind of persons you would say are perhaps model citizens. They are men and women who are on the down and out. 
As a seminarian, I would walk down that mile and I would sit in that park. And it wasn't long. It's easy when you wear, you know, the black and white as the priest wears, or the seminarian often wears, before somebody would ask me, what are you doing here? And then little by little, a conversation would ensue. It was very interesting for me to note that very quickly they would tell me about their lives. There was a great confidence that immediately struck up. And I remember very clearly one of the men that I met there. His name was Joseph. And Joseph began to tell me about his life. He told me about how he had a family and how through the use of alcohol he eventually left his family and found himself living day and night in this park. How he would wake up in the morning and the first thing he would do is he'd go and find the bottle and began to drink. And then throughout the day he would drink more and more until the evening would come and he would fall asleep and repeat the following day. He would tell me that he didn't really want to live this kind of life. You know, he would imagine, you know, who would choose to live this kind of life? But this is where he found himself. What he was looking for was not at the bottom of the bottle, but rather peace. He told me that each and every single day as he did the same things, what he was really hoping for, what he was looking for, what he was seeking with all of his heart, was just rest. He just wanted to rest. So in those moments, of course, you know, there's only so much that a person can do. I asked Joseph if he'd like to pray with me and asked him if he remembered any prayers. And his eyes lit up and he said, the Our Father. And so we said the Our Father there together. So many of us are looking for peace so many of us are looking for just satisfaction, just a moment of rest. Pius XI instituted this great feast of Christ the King precisely for that reason, precisely because he saw a world filled with strife. He saw a world filled with conflict, with anger. And he desired to place Christ in the center of all of it. When he instituted this feast in 1925, we were in between those two great world wars, and there were still much, there were many challenges still facing the world, much division. How much more can we say that even today, almost a hundred years later, the same still remains? Pius the Twelfth or Pius the Eleventh had this to say as what he believed the reason was in 1925. He said, these manifold evils in the world are due to the fact that the majority of men have thrust Jesus Christ and his holy law out of their lives, that these have no place either in private affairs or in politics, and that as long as individuals and states refuse to submit to the rule of the Savior, there will be no really hopeful prospect of a lasting peace. If he could say that in 1925, he could certainly say it today. Today, it is not just merely nations that rise up against nations, but families and individuals who rise up against each other. All we have to do is look to the news, and all we have to do is look to our conversations. Some of us are perhaps even fearing, oh, there's that uncle who always brings up these kind of things. He always does these, you know, wants these kind of conversations, even within our own families. There are divisions about how we are to approach the realities of our world, whether it be our approaches to COVID, whether it be our approach, approaches to politics, or even any number of other subjects, religion as well. And so division reigns where Christ desires to plant the flag of peace. Many of the causes of our own unhappiness are because we seek so many divisions, so many diversions in this life, so many things to distract us so that we don't have to face the fact that in the depths of our hearts we are actually unsettled, that we do not have the peace we seek. The great 18th century French philosopher Blaise Pascal had this to write about the fact that there are so many wars, even wars that rage today and wars in his time, he says that sometimes when I think about the various activities of men, the dangers and the troubles which they face at court and war, 
that give rise to so many quarrels and passions, daring and wicked enterprises and so on? I have often said, Pascal says, that the sole cause of man's unhappiness is that he does not know how to stay quietly in his room. How true is this? How often do we try to seek to avoid, to pretend that that unhappiness, that unsettledness, that lack of peace in our own hearts is not there by binging on Netflix, by spending more time at work, by just ignoring the realities of our lives. It might be that we choose to do this by overindulgence in food, or like Joseph, the man in the park with alcohol. Perhaps we do it by trying to seek greater and greater control in our lives, and we end up becoming angry when things are not exactly as we expect. Or maybe we seek them out in lustful activities. Perhaps it's just a simple disobedience to God and church. Maybe a selfishness and envy. All of these things, whatever they might be, have the same effect. They might satisfy for a moment, even as the bottle for Joseph satisfies for a short time. But nonetheless, leave us empty. This great feast of Christ the King, celebrated year in and year out, is a great reminder to us that there can be no happiness and no peace in our own hearts until Christ is placed upon that throne, the throne of our hearts. If we do not have satisfaction, if we do not have peace, we have to ask ourselves, what is on the throne? For it will not be Christ. If we seek to place ourselves upon the throne, as so often we do, if we seek to make ourselves gods as our first parents, Adam and Eve, we will find ourselves in a terrible situation. For if we arrogate to ourselves the role of God of the universe without the power of the God of the universe, all we can hope to expect is to fail and to find ourselves lying in bed at night wondering, why did I do this? Why did I do that? Why didn't I do things better? Christ has come because he wants to be the king of peace for you. He wants to be the king of rest. St. Augustine so famously said that my heart cannot rest until it rests in you, O Lord. This is the very human condition. And so, my brothers and sisters, if you seek for peace, seek Christ. If you seek for justice out in the world, seek Christ, the King of justice. If you seek satisfaction, seek only him who can give you the true satisfaction. If you seek a place to lay down your head, if you seek a pl place to find comfort, seek only Christ. For he will tell you and you will discover that our satisfaction cannot be found in this world. And that to the extent that we have Christ upon our throne, we will find that extent of peace. When we see the divisions out in the world, the conflict among nations, and even amongst our family members, we will not worry if we have Christ on the throne of our heart. For we will know that this is a passing world. That all of the importance that the world places upon these passing matters really is unimportant, does not matter at all. We will remember that we who have Christ as king of our hearts, that he has placed for us, he has made for us a home in heaven, and that there our hearts are meant to be, and that if we indeed place him on our throne, that prince of peace, we will have peace now, and perfect peace then, when we rest in the home he has placed for us, made for us, in the kingdom of heaven in our heavenly home. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence, we lift our petitions to the Lord. For the church throughout the world, may the grace of God continue to strengthen and nourish her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people in this faith community, discerning a vocation to the priesthood of religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our country and those who are serving as military first responders and essential personnel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they enter into the fullness of life in the kingdom of God, especially Joan Sozio, John McGonagall, Arthur Cronin, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For William Driscoll and Ellen Driscoll, for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs sp best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Wilfredo Ruiz Oliveras, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to receive these prayers, for they are offered in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 404, Earthen Vessels, number 404. Yeah. 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you anointed Christ, your only begotten Son, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and, making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you go, until you. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. is number 336, One Bread, One Body, number 336. Our next hymn is number 355, Miracle of Grace, number 355. Oh, 
so eat this bread shall live and never die. Bread of life, bread of life. You're to presence in this holy sacrifice. Bread of life. Unworthy though we are, you feed the hungry heart. We have bread come down from heaven above. And like a grain of wheat, we fall down at your feet. Dying here with you, oh, let us rise. Bread of life, bread of life. Those who eat this bread shall live and never die. Bread of life, bread of life. Your true presence in this holy sacrifice. Bread of life. Your faithfulness revealed in this covenant you sealed with your very body and your blood. Come claim your bride again with love that cannot end. For what God joins us, no one can divide. Bread of life, bread of life. Those who eat this bread shall live and never die. Bread of life, bread of life. Your true presence in this holy sacrifice. Bread of Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Join us for our Advent retreat on Wednesday, December 1st at 7 p.m. This will be a live stream event with Father Timothy Gallagher of the Oblates of the Virgin Mary. He's a world-renowned uh, spiritual director and writes many books on discernment of spirits and the spiritual life. It will surely be a very informative and a very helpful spiritual retreat. On Sunday, December 5th, St. John's Seminary is hosting their annual event of Lessons and Carols. We will have a bus that will leave from here, this parish, to attend the event. It's a beautiful opportunity to see the, uh, the, the choir of St. John's Seminary, as well as to see the building itself, which is its own kind of uh, particular attraction. Uh, more details can be found on that or any of the, our other events in the bulletin. Our children's choir practice begins today, immediately following this Mass for our Christmas Masses, or for a, our children's Christmas Mass. We also have our adult choir that rehearses on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. They will also be singing at the 2 p.m. Vigil Christmas Mass. And lastly, our high school youth group meeting is today at 7 p.m. in the Murphy Room. We'll be having pizza and watching The Chosen. Everyone from 9th through 12th grade is invited to attend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our recessional hymn is number 381, Go Out, Go Out, number 381. Go out, go 